Hey guys, so I wanted to film the second part of the q and um, I put out the first part of the Vlogtober q and I don't know, maybe two weeks ago or so, and then I asked you guys if you had more questions to send them, and I got quite a few questions actually, so I'm going to um, answer these. So first question, will fair be compete in agility or are you just playing at home? So we are just playing at home. There's nowhere close to us that we can actually do that at, so it would be a lot of time commitment. So for now, it's just at home. If at some point we, um, you know, we move to an area where there is agility nearby, I sure would let her try it. We lived near a park before that had like real agility equipment, like not that what we have isn't real, but it had like, you know, the A-frames and it had the bridge and it had um, like some different jumps and weave poles and stuff. Um, so she has played on it before, but you know, nothing serious. So I would not be against it. But I would actually really prefer dock dive. Um, Fairy loves water, so if we ever lived somewhere near a place where we could do dock diving, that would be my first choice of dock sports. So the next question is, did you take a class to learn to groom Fairy? No, um, I've learned to groom her as she's grown. So I got her at nine and a half weeks old, and I basically just watched some stuff online, and I got the clippers. <laughs> And I was just like, well, hopefully I can do this. Um, I've had animals, as you guys probably know by now, I've had animals my whole life and I have groomed my other animals. No one has had the extent of hair that Farabee has had, but I have had experience shaving like faces and stuff before because the Chinese Cresteds. And then also I used to shave Allie's whole body. Allie was a big fluffy kitty, um, but I would shave her whole body a lot of times in the summer. So I have had experience actually shaving animals and you know, kind of grooming in that way, but I've never taken a formal class or anything like that. So it takes maybe 20 minutes every day to brush her and brush her teeth. And then on bath days, it probably tacks on maybe an hour to that maybe. Let's do a non therapy question. <laughs> so what's up with the drone? Okay, so I just got a drone because I wanted one. I just thought it'd be fun. And I thought it might be a fun way to add some cool footage to our videos. It is a lot of fun. I love it. And the one I got, I'll show you guys since somebody asked. So the drone I got is this one. Um, it is the DJI Mavic Air 2. And yeah, so it's, it's this. And Farabee loves it. So the next question is, what is your dream gear setup? And I don't really have a dream gear setup. I mean, I really like the Patience and Loves vests. Um, I also really like their leash wraps. And we have a few of those. Um, I'm more, like I like to make her vest a lot of them. So I kind of don't necessarily have like a dream gear setup. I think, and I know this is not the question, but I think if I was just gonna have like a dream gear setup, I would love for rough wear boots to come in more of the colors than they do. And I would love to have rough wear boots and the rec spec sunglasses in basically every color they come in but i wish that rough wear made more boot color options and that way like we could have a purple pair and a pink pair and you know like so on and so forth that would kind of be like my dream gear setup but that's not really gear but like i said i do like the patience and loves love vests a whole lot it's hard for me to commit like that because they're so beautiful and like they're they're all like you know it's designed and like you can't change anything on it. So I'm more of a, let's kind of have more of a planer vest and a bunch of different patches person. I probably will end up getting a patience and love vest at some point, but that would be, I guess, my dream piece. A PTSD question. Do you deal with seizure like episodes with your PTSD? No, not really. I go into dissociation a lot of times and I also, uh, I have panic attacks and anxiety attacks, but those are not like seizure-like. They're just more like, they're like where I can't get it together, honestly. They're not seizure-y in any way. Like there's no like involuntary, well, I mean, I guess a shake, but it's not like a seizure shake. Um, I don't like seize up and, you know, and do a seizure type thing. Is Farabee your first owner-trained service dog and would you consider a program dog? Farabee is the first one I've trained. Um, I had Bella before, and I'm sure you guys have heard me mention her before. Bella wasn't trained as a service dog, but Bella, whenever I started having problems, Bella automatically knew something was wrong with me and helped me. And she knew before I knew that there was something going on, like way before. And so because of that, I knew how I wanted Farabee to react to stuff. And I kind of realized because of Bella that that was an option for a dog to help me in that way. 
I never, Bella was perfect. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. Everyone who knew Bella would say she was perfect. Like she was perfect. Like she was the perfect, perfect dog. Not the fairy's not perfect, but Bella was next level. You couldn't get better as far as just everything goes. So Bella didn't really need to be trained to do anything um, as far as like going out in public or whatever. Like she was just perfect. She was well behaved. She did it all. Um, so Fair Beast the first one I've trained, but I had Bella, little guiding angel, to kind of show me. Fair Beast, did you get your feelings hurt? <laughs> Come here. Come here. Did you get your feelings hurt because I said somebody was perfect? It's like Mama said I wasn't as perfect as somebody. Okay. Fair Beast perfect. Fair Beast perfect too. Anyway. Um, but even though Fair Beast the first one I've trained, Bella was... Bella kind of trained me, um, so I don't know how to answer this. Yeah, Fair Beast the first one I've trained, but technically I consider Bella kind of my first service dog, even though she kind of wasn't. She kind of was, so that. Um, and next question was, would I consider a program dog? I wouldn't consider a program dog um, because I feel like the bond that I have wouldn't be what I have with Fair Beast. I feel like if a dog spent whatever, 16 months to two years, or 18 months to two years in a program, they are gonna not have that bond with me that I get whenever I get a puppy and train them myself. So as long as I'm physically able to train a dog, I would prefer to do it myself. Do you still knit? Yes, and I actually grabbed my bag to show you guys. So yes, I do still knit. I don't knit nearly as much as I used to. Um, there was one year I knit 13 sweaters in a year and other things too, like full size for me sweaters, but this is my knitting bag. And currently I'm knitting a blanket. I'll show you what I have started of it. Um, I'm not usually like a blanket knitter. So this is, well, I have one blanket that I kind of keep going. But anyways, so yeah. There's more dog questions too. So y'all don't leave, hold on. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm knitting this and this is just the start of, it looks like a scarf right now, but it's actually gonna be a blanket. And this is my bag that I carry around for my knitting. And it's 8,000 pounds because it has a million pins. Next question. What is the biggest goal you have? The biggest goal I have is kind of not even necessarily a personal goal. Um, the biggest goal I have is to somehow one day, somehow, I have, I guess this is going to be like a lottery winning thing. Um, <laughs> I would love to open up a place for domestic violence victims who have animals to go. Because whenever I was in my situation, there was a lot of reasons I didn't leave, but one of the reasons I didn't leave is because if you go to like a women's shelter, you cannot bring your dogs or your cats unless they're a service animal, obviously. And also there's a 30 day limit on how long you can stay in these places. And as anyone knows, if you have a lot of different abuse stuff going on, 30 days isn't long enough to get it together. Um, it's just not. So I, I didn't ever go to a place like that. So I instead stayed in hell. Um, and I'm not saying that's the only reason, because there were there was a ton of reasons, but that was one reason. Another reason was because of I would not be able to bring my animals. And whenever the really bad abuse stuff started, I had four animals. And there was no way I was leaving them. There was just no way I was leaving them. So my biggest goal would be to somehow have enough money to open up like, basically like a, a I don't know, a community, I guess where it would be for um, women who, and I'm sorry to exclude men, I don't mean to exclude men, exclude men, but I feel like whenever you're doing anything like this for safety, like it almost has to be gender specific. Maybe I could do two, maybe I could do a man and a woman. I don't know, anyway. But open up a facility where women could have like their own little house with a fenced in yard and um, where they could bring their animals, have enough time to get together, have on-site therapists and stuff like that to help them see where they need to be obviously help them get treatment if they needed to outside of what the place could provide. Not make it mandatory or anything, but you know, provide them the tools they need. Um, I think it'd be really cool to also have somebody on staff um, who could help with resume building, help them figure out how to maybe even get like a trade, like if they needed to go to trade school for some reason, um, maybe work with some local places that did that kind of stuff have on-site animal behaviorist who could help with, you know, if people came in and they had aggressive animals for some reason, that it wouldn't be an insurance liability so that the animals could also be in a training program. Um, 
basically and go through it with their their you know their dog mom or whatever and also not have such a strict 30 day limit like i think it'd be better to have like maybe a 90 day and if we see that you're just not trying then you know then you get the boot but if you're if you're trying and it's just not lining up for you then obviously you stay longer there's a lot more things in my big plan of what i would like to help and do than that but that would be my ultimate like biggest goal would be to make a place like that and I, like I said, I think also having pet sitters, dog walkers, things like that on site so people could go off and work and work on themselves and not have to worry about the safety of their animals and not have to worry about going home for potty breaks. You know, I think that would be huge. So that. How much time do you spend training therapy? I spend a stupid amount of time. <laughs> I don't even know, honestly. Um, we just do stuff constantly. Um, at least once a day we do tricks. And whenever we do tricks, I try to incorporate, you know, a new thing in there sometimes. Um, not every single time, but, you know, I try to have, like, things she's not as good at or either a new thing incorporated. Obviously, we go out and we work, you know, out in public a lot, too. I don't know. On a, on a short day, we probably do 30 minutes of training. But then, of course, if it's a day we go out and do stuff, you know, it's hours. So, I don't know. I don't know how long I spend training her, but we spend a crazy amount of time. I feel like, and every, everything is training, right? I mean, really, everything is training because everything that we do, I'm communicating with her constantly. I mean, anytime that she starts barking for no reason, I encourage her to go use her buttons, which are right over there, um, which right over there for you guys. So I encourage her to use her buttons to communicate and, you know, so that's a constant thing because she's allowed to bark and stuff at home. She's allowed to do dog stuff but at the same time there's training involved because I don't want her just to bark and act like a fool for no reason if she's barking she needs to communicate and let me know what it is she wants and so she has a button for a lot of things I mean I'm sure I'm missing some things that she would like to have but I have there's eight buttons and I feel like we have a pretty good selection you know so if she's doing that I encourage her to go you know what do you need show me on the buttons like we're not gonna do this hoop and holler and thing but like I said, it never ends. It's just like whenever you're a parent, you know, you are constantly doing things to modify behaviors, even if it's just, what do we say? We say please, we say thank you, you know, whatever. You know, that kind of stuff that you're, it's a constant. Like it's not just you do parenting like for 30 minutes a day and then you're just done and everything just goes to hell. <laughs> like you're constantly, like you're constantly having to mold this little person into what you want and it's the same with therapy like i'm constantly molding her into what i think she needs to do so thanks for watching and like i said i'll link some things and we'll see you tomorrow bye guys